my light bows charging up my light bows charging up my light bows going to play with them charging up my light bows charging up my light bows charging what is going on All right, so today we're going to talk about the new high-tech RDX-1 6-amp charger. It's pretty nice. comes with the charger itself, power cord, two adapters for batteries. This one comes with an XT60. This one comes empty, so you can put whatever connector you want on there. And the balance board. Charger itself is nice, it's an upright design, it's compact, has both AC and DC inputs, nice little fan on the back, buttons, this is where the balance board goes, place for a temperature sensor, main charging leads, USB link, this is allowing you to connect it to your computer and use the software that's available on the website, and it also has a 2.1 amp USB charger for charging your phones or whatever else you need to charge. Manual is upside down. Manual is fairly complete. Has some really good information in it. Uh, slightly chinglish e. Um, you can tell that the person that wrote it first language is not English. But it's got everything you need in here, all the instructions. I'm not going to go through that. You can look at it yourself if you get one. All right, let's get this plugged in. All right, so we're going to plug in the included power cord. Wait a second. You can hear the fan spin up. It'll turn back off again. And we get this menu here. So the keys are a little bit confusing. Um, it took me a couple minutes to get used to it, but you, you will get used to it pretty quickly. Um, you've got program select here, which allows you to choose different preset programs. You can set those on the box, or you can also set them in the software. When you're choosing the program, you use the up and down arrows to choose the program, but then you hit enter, and it drops you down into the sub-menu. Now, when you're in the sub-menu, the up and down changes between the items in the menu as opposed to up here where the up and down changed the actual uh, selection within that one item. So that's a little bit confusing, but you've got your battery types here. That's you got LiPo, uh, Life, uh, Lead Acid, Nickel Metal Hydride will do all that. Battery cells will do from 1S to 6S. Modes, you have Charge, Balance, Discharge, and storage. Um, charge, you know what that is. Balance will just balance the battery out for you. Discharge, uh, it has a, it says it's a two amp discharge rate, but two amps is only at 6S from what I found. Uh, if it's at 2S, you're only gonna get a third of that or say about 0.68 amps or something like that, which is fine, but if you wanna you know, do a battery test to discharge your battery, it's gonna be a while. Um, Got constant current mode. Oopsie, menus are messing me up again. Okay, so you've, you've got your thing and you, you choose which one you want. You hit enter for that. Constant current mode. Uh, and these, these menus change depending on what your, um, depending on what your mode is, but I'll go up to charge here. And you get used to this pretty quick. There's also fast charge. I haven't really determined what that is yet. Um, it doesn't say in the manual. I'm assuming it bumps the charge current up as high as possible. So we'll go into charge mode here, and then we'll go ahead and hook a battery up. So we plug the balance board into the front, and we plug the leads in here. I've got, I've already got a Dean's connector lead from my old charger. So go ahead and plug that in and slide that to the back. I got a 2S battery here. We'll plug that in. This battery is already full, so 
Um, it's probably going to give me an error when I go to charge it, but I'll actually put it on discharge so we can see the different options. All right, so I'm just going to put this on discharge for now. And um, so then when you have the settings you want, you hold down this button on the right, checks the battery, gives you some information up top, and hit enter to confirm, and then it's in discharge mode, or whatever mode you happen to choose. Now when it's in this mode, you can scroll down, and it'll give you additional information below, but then you can also hit the enter button, and that will give you your battery meter, give you your high, your low, different voltages for the cells, and the main voltage, and the state of charge. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the fan is automatic, so sometimes it'll be on, sometimes it won't. I found that it doesn't get too hot. I've used it for a little while now. Uh, seems to work just fine. I've tested the voltages with a, a fluke meter, and everything it says seems right. But uh, I want to see what's inside, because that, that's going to give us a good indication of how long this thing's going to last, how well it's built. So let's get this case off and see what's inside. Now, I'm not an electronics engineer, but I do have some background, so I, I can look at this and, and kind of tell if it was designed well, if it was built well, and um, if there's any major flaws with it. So let's crack this cover open. Trying to be careful here. All right, and we are in like Dave Jones. All right, let's see what we've got. Front panel connects. I'm not gonna tear this down too far. I just wanna take a quick look at it. Front panel connects with a couple of ribbon cables, a couple of flat flexes. Um, let's see what we've got here. We've got main input, um, tour idles. Let's see what brand the capacitor is. Acon, I've never heard of it. 400 volt. It's 105C, so that's good. It's not just 80C. Uh, a bunch of Celastic here holding things in. I uh, can't really see into the transformer. The fan is JSL. I haven't heard of them either. Um, got heat sink here. And you can see there's a little temperature probe. So it's got internal temperature protection. Overall, it looks fairly clean. I don't really see anything that's gonna jump right out. You can see the front, the front panel connectors are soldered on there pretty well. Nice beefy wires coming from the main board over. So yeah, this looks uh, this looks pretty good. You can see the date here, 322.16. It's a, it's a very new model and um, it looks like it was put together pretty well. Let's pull this out and look at the back of the board. Actually, I'm not going to pull that out. I, uh, I don't want to take that out, risk damaging it. Uh, I got some heat sink compound. Oh, okay, that's just put on with heat sink compound. That's kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's okay, but I would have liked to have seen some glue there instead. Um, some thermal transfer glue. But overall, you know, it's, in, it's pretty good. All right, let's get this back together. So would I recommend buying this charger? It's $60 right now, and I think for those $60, you get a pretty good deal. Um, I really enjoy having the USB link to be able to control it via the computer. If you guys want to see a video on that software, we, I can do a separate video, just let me know. Uh, it, it's pretty straightforward, but, but if you want to see that, I can do that as well. Um, the menus, once you kind of figure out the idio idiosyncrasies of the buttons, they're pretty easy to work with. Um, it's nice and clear, gives lots of information. Uh, as you saw, it's pretty well built inside. It, it doesn't look like uh, it was hacked together. It looks like it was pretty well thought out. And, um, and it works. I've been using it for about a week, and it seems to accurately do charging and balancing. And I'm hoping to be able to enjoy it for years to come. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.